Okay, so if you followed along on this playlist, you know the, the deal with these videos. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do the, the equations first. So I'm going to do the equations for an RC parallel circuit now. And then once we're done the equations, then we'll scroll down and we'll work on uh, an example. So this guy for the RC parallel circuit is um, going to be a resistor and a capacitor in parallel, obviously. Uh, we're going to feed it with 480 volts at 60 hertz. Uh, the resistance is going to be 125 ohms and the XC is going to be 350. So we've got to figure out our equations first to tackle this guy. So let's start off with those guys. Uh, but if you already have <clears throat> the equations written down, then if you go to the comment section, I should have um, a note saying exactly when the actual circuit um, example is going to start. So stick with me for these, these equations, and then we'll, we'll look at that example of an RC parallel circuit. So this is very similar to the RL parallel circuit, right? So we're gonna have a AC source and we've got a resistor and we've got a capacitor in parallel with that guy. All right, so that's our resistance. This is our capacitance there. So we're gonna tackle this the same way. The voltage is the same all the way through. It's a parallel circuit. That rule does not change whatsoever. So it doesn't matter what type of circuit you're looking at, in parallel, the voltage will always be the same. So that means that total voltage is going to be equal to the, the voltage across the resistor and the voltage across the capacitor. Excellent. That holds true. That's the same as we had with the parallel RL circuit. Okay, that means that the currents are messed up. So that means that our total current is equal to our resistive current. And we're going to square that guy plus our induct, sorry, capacitive current, square that guy. Depending on your calculator, you may need to use double brackets. We're gonna take the square root of those guys. Again, I've said this on the previous videos, all of these equations are based off of Pythagorean's theorem, where we're doing adjacent squared plus opposite squared to provide us with the hypotenuse. Okay, so the hypotenuse is the total, the adjacent is always the resistive value, and the capacitive value in this case will be the opposite. So adjacent squared plus opposite squared. Okay, if we're going to draw this guy out, again, if this messes you up, then don't worry about it. But this one is an ice circuit. That means that in this circuit, the current leads and the voltage lags. So with that mnemonic for capacitors, anything on the left is going to lead, anything on the right is going to lag behind. So in this case, uh, we're in terms, our triangle is in terms of the current because the voltage is the same all the way through. And if it's leading, then we're going to be pointing it up. So if we have the X and the Y axes, then that guy is going to be pointing up like this. I'm going to try and draw all the triangles the same because they should have the same ratio. Okay, anything to do with the resistor is on the adjacent. In this case, anything to do with the capacitor is on the opposite. And the totals for the circuit, IT, is going to be our hypotenuse. Okay, so IR squared plus IC squared square root will give us our total current for the circuit. Sweet. This one is dirty though when it comes to the, the uh, impedance value. So we're going to call this dirty Z. It's dirty because it has a number of different things going on in the same equation. <clears throat> so we have a parallel circuit. So normally with a parallel circuit, we have the reciprocal equation. So we have to draw that in. Okay, if you haven't seen my previous videos, um, then this term right here is the impedance. That's the total kind of resistance in the circuit, but it, it takes in, into account the resistance and the capacitive reactance. So capacitive reactance is as a capacitor charges up, it comes very close to, or even greater than the source voltage here. So it's gonna create, uh, not a magnetic resistance, but it's going to create electrostatic resistance within the circuit there. So we call this in my class a counter EMF. So even though it has an ohmic value, it's a back voltage. So we have the reciprocal equation here, but we also have the fact that these two currents are going to happen at different times and that this voltage on the capacitor is going to happen at a different time than the source voltage. So what we need to do is we need to square these guys because not only are they reciprocal, but they don't happen at the same time, so we have to make use of Pythagorean's theorem as well. So this equation is 1 over 1 over r squared plus 1 over xc squared, and then we'll have to take the square root of those guys. 
Okay, so we're going to stay away from dirty z because that's a disgusting equation to put into uh, the calculator. Once you do it a couple times, it's not so bad, but we can find those answers with Ohm's law and Watt's law. This value is 1 over r. This value is 1 over xc, and this guy is 1 over z. Okay, I've tried to show the triangles being the same. This angle will be the same all the way through. The ratio of resistive current over total current is the same as 1 over r over 1 over z. Okay, the power equation is VA is equal to watts squared, so adjacent squared, plus the opposite. The opposite, well, that capacitor holds charge. It holds potential energy as it holds that charge. So the term for that is volt amps reactive. So we have wattage, heat and light coming off the resistor, and we have potential energy being held across the capacitor there. The combination of those guys gives us our VA for the circuit there. Okay, the triangle for that guy is exactly the same ratio. Watts is the adjacent, VA is the hypotenuse. In this case, VARS with a little subscript C is gonna be the opposite. Okay, so same ratio all the way through. <clears throat> all right, so we need the power factor. We need the efficiency of the circuit. That's always watts over VA. Uh, be careful with this one. This one is Z over R because that reciprocal equation. And then finally, uh, IR over IT. So all of those guys have the same ratio all the way through. And looking at those guys, that was the adjacent over the hypotenuse value. And that is the cos ratio. So in order to find the phase shift between total voltage and total current, we'll take the inverse cos of the power factor. So now that you've done like three or four of these examples now, you see that these equations are just repetitive. They're just Pythagoras over and over and over. The power factor, just be careful of this one right here. That changes between series and parallel circuits. Okay, the equation for capacitors, we'll do an Ohm's law circle here. And the equation for capa capacitor reactants is Xc is equal to one over two times pi times frequency times capacitance. Okay, so we have two equations here. Xc is equal to one over two times pi times frequency times capacitance. Okay, so one divided by two times pi times frequency times capacitance. And if we need the capacitance, we just cover that up with our thumb and we get the other equation. So that's gonna be equal to one over two times pi times the frequency times Xc. So you can see that these two terms right here just change spots. Okay, so the XC and the C are just going to change spots there. Okay, and then you'll be able to figure out each of your different uh, equations there. I'll just get rid of those guys because they'll screw you up if you're looking at it later on. Okay, and I think that's everything we need for this circuit. Excellent, so now let's jump into an example. Uh, at this point, I want you to pause the video I want you to write down all of these equations to try and memorize them. You find that we, very, we need very few of them going through on the chart example, but it's good to know all of the equations for each of the different circuits. So stop here, take a blank sheet of paper, write down everything, and then follow through on the example. Again, on the example here, um, I should have a PDF at some point that is in the comment section of each of these videos here. Um, so you'll be able to to pick that up and see it on your phone um, or you can print it out and work through it but if you don't have that then just take a screenshot or pause the video right here jot down the total voltage values the resistive values and the capacitive values and you can work away with at this with us obviously there's no coil in the circuit so we're going to take out that portion of the circuit okay so and again i have all my steps here all the steps are going to match with the answers that i've provided but there are like five or six different ways that we can tackle this. You don't have to follow the exact steps that I have here. So pause here. Using those equations that we just looked at, then find everything in the circuit, then restart the video at this point, and then see if you've gotten all of the answers correct. And you're only gonna center in on the things that you get wrong. Everything else you already know, so don't go back over that. Just go over the stuff that you screwed up. Okay, so let's start off with this guy. Let's grab uh, on all the videos, I think I've been using a blue pen here. So <clears throat> this is a parallel circuit. So obviously the voltage is going to be the same all the way through. 
I try and use standard voltages. I hate in textbooks when they use non-standard voltages. Because um, for me, it just screws me up. I don't want to see something with 173 volts. It doesn't really exist. I mean, it may exist in some portions, but like you have standard voltages, 120, 28, uh, 240, 277, 347, 480, 600. Those are the standard voltages that we have uh, in Canada. So if you're watching this from a different country, um, all of our grid works off of 60 hertz. So that's why I've chosen 60 rather than 50 hertz. Okay, so uh, our voltage is across, that's step number one. Step number two, remember that I've said in previous videos, this is just a giant Sudoku. So this guy here is just Ohm's law. And anything over here is gonna be Watt's law. Right, Ohm's law being voltage, current, and some form of resistance. And Watt's law being power is equal to voltage times current for the most simplistic equation for Watt's law. So this guy right here, we're gonna have 480 volts divided by 125 ohms. And so we'll just bring up the calculator here and we'll find those guys. Let me just move this over so we have a little bit more room. Okay, so where we got 480. Hello. Okay, so we got 480 divided by what, 125? Okay, so we got 3.84. And let me just check, because I want to make sure that I'm using three decimal places. Okay, so that's good, 3.84. Okay, so that is the current right here. And I find it's easier to draw in values as you find them. Next step is we're going to find the current that is flowing in the capacitive portion. That's going to be our voltage divided by our capacitive reactance. Okay, so remember, voltage divided by that form of resistance, which is capacitive reactance. So 480 divided by 350. Okay, come on, 480 divided by 350. I'll use my, I have a touch screen here, so maybe this is a little better. I'm not sure if that mouse clicking is uh, bothering you as I do it. So 1.371. Okay, excellent, so that current is right here. Sweet. Step four is gonna be Pythagoras. I know that I have the adjacent, so again, this chart is set up, we have hypotenuse, we have the adjacent, and in this case, this is the opposite of each of our triangles there. So I have the adjacent current and I have the opposite current, and I wanna use Pythagoras in order to find my hypotenuse. My hypotenuse is always the greatest value, so I'm looking for a value that's greater than 3.84, but I cannot just add up these two values. They don't happen at the same time. I have to use Pythagoras. So I have a little bit of room up here. So I'm gonna go 3.84, and square that guy, plus 1.371, square that guy, double brackets, square root to those guys, and that's gonna give us our total current there. So let's bring up our calculator again. Okay, so what do we got? 3.84. <clears throat> oh, I gotta do the square root, right? So let's do everything all in one shot here. So you have second function square root. And again, if you don't have a calculator that does this all in one shot, I would go and spend in Canada, it costs about 20 bucks to get a decent uh, calculator. So I would go and spend the cash and buy a decent calculator that does this all in one shot. So that before you hit the equals, you've already taken a look at your equation and seen that it matches exactly with what you have on the page there. So let's stop here. Square root, double brackets, 3.84 squared, plus brackets, 1.371, close brackets squared, and then finally my last bracket there. Looks good, I'm gonna hit equals. I'm gonna 4.077 amps. Beautiful. Okay, so that means that that current right here is 4.077 amps. Nice. Okay, it looks good. Um, next thing we're going to do is we're going to find the impedance. Again, the impedance is the combination of the resistance and the XC. But remember, this is a parallel circuit. It makes use of the dirty Z. And we, in that dirty Z, we have the reciprocal equation. So this value right here, we're looking for a value that's, that's less than the smallest value. So less than 125 ohms. Okay, I'm not going to use that dirty Z equation. All I'm going to do here is I'm just going to do Ohm's law. So 
a lot of times you can get away with just doing Ohm's law to find most of your values there. Let's bring up our calculator now. Let's clear this out. And we got what, 480 divided by 4.077. And again, we're looking for a value that's less than 125. So we got 117.7333. Okay, and then that is an ohmic value. Sweet. Okay, and then we're going to do Watt's law. We're going to do voltage times current all the way through. So I'm not going to write that in because I don't have very much room in each of those uh, boxes there. But I'm going to do the first voltage, so 480 volts times, so I'm going off of this guy right here, 4.077 amps. Okay, and that's going to give me my volt amps. So I got 1956.96. That's my VA value. Okay, next one I'm gonna do is my watts. So we'll take the same voltage, 480 volts, and we're gonna multiply that by this current right here, the 3.84. Okay, and that gives me 1843.2. That's in watts there, so I'm good because my VA has to be the largest value in the circuit. And then I've got to uh, take my 480 volts. So I got 480 volts. I'm going to multiply that now by 1.371. And we'll have 658.08 bar C. Okay. Um, we're trying to expedite this process when we're on the, the test, so we're trying to do as little as possible to find the answers. But if you wanted to stop and double check your values, this squared plus this squared, square root, should give you a value that's very close to that VA that we found there. Okay, next step, we're finding the, the power factor. So with that guy, we've always been doing the wattage. So 1843.2 watts divided by our VA, 1956.96 VA. And so let's see how that turns out for the efficiency of the circuit. So we got 1843.2. We're going to divide that by 1956.96. Uh, <clears throat> not bad. 94%. Nine, so that gives us 0 0.941. Right? So that's 94.1% efficient. Again, if you're wondering why I'm not rounding up, in our class we say three decimal places and don't round up with the, uh, with the next digit there. So that way most of us have the exact same or very close to the same values going all the way through. If you're plus or minus 5 to 10%, then you're good to go. Okay, remember that each of your components, your resistor, your capacitor in the field are going to have plus or minus 5% tolerance just from the manufacturers. So don't stress too much if your values aren't uh, exactly what you see on the page here. Okay, we need to do the inverse cos of 94%. Uh, so we're going to do a uh, second function. And we're going to do cos. I think I hit some something out there. So second function, uh, cos. And we're looking for uh, 0 0.941. We'll close the brackets and hit equals. And we see 19.779. So roughly 20 degrees out of phase with total voltage and total current. Excellent. Last step here is to find the capacitance. And from our equation sheet there, we see that capacitance is equal to 1 over 2 times pi times frequency times xc. Okay, so in that case, we're going to have um, 1 divided by, so let's bring up our calculator there. So we've got 1 divided by brackets, uh, 2 times pi. So depending on your calculator, sometimes 2 pi will work, but you may want to just put in 2 times pi. So 2 times pi times 60 hertz, and we're going to find our xc. xc was 350, so times 350, and we'll close the brackets there, and we'll see what we come up with. Okay, so mine actually worked out. I got 7.578 to the exponent negative 6. So 7.578 times 10 to the negative 6, and that's giving me 7.578 microfarads.
right? So, but if your calculator did not give you uh, that value, then you may have an, uh, an engineering button. Do I have that online? No, I have to change my, I have to go in and change my mode there. Um, but again, if you have like to the negative five, you're gonna have to move that over one decimal place there. If we're gonna write that value out, then that's gonna be 0. Uh, what is that, five? So that's the same value right there. So uh, if we move this over one, two, three, four, five, six decimal places, then all of these guys are the same value all the way through. So depending on your calculator, you may uh, see a value to the negative four or the negative five. You have to change that over to microfarads because the answer on the test is going to be uh, in the standard microfarads. All right, guys, hopefully everything uh, made sense. Again, our steps here were to bring our voltage across, find individual currents for resistance and capacitance, use Pythagoras to find our total current there, use that to find our impedance, voltage times current all the way through, watts over VA for our power factor, inverse cos for the angle, and then using this equation here in order to find um, our total capacitance or total charge that the capacitor can hold. All right, guys, hopefully everything made sense. If you like this video, give us a like, subscribe for more videos. I'm going to continue on with the, uh, the playlist here. So there's a link there on the bottom in the comment section on the playlist. And the next one we're going to do uh, looks like we're going to do the series RLC circuit on the next, uh, next video. Again, I may play around with the, the playlist. So we may have all of the RL circuits together, all the RC circuits, and then all the, all the parallel RL and parallel RC. Um, but again, later down in the, the, the playlist area, we should find the next set of circuits being the series RLC circuits. So we'll see you then. Thanks very much for your patience, guys. We'll see you in the next video.